Well, I'm coming to you tonight uh, into the Spreaker Studios once again. Alexander Garrett, hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying warm on this windy October night. Uh, hope you've had a great Saturday and hopefully you didn't get too wet because the rain did come down at times today. Um, but I'm on tonight because of obviously a couple of things. First of all, here in New York, we I completed a big day at the National Publicity Summit. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it was a place where people whose ideas, whose solutions to today's problems, well, they're hoping to be heard. And you will hear these solutions to real world, real life problems on this podcast in the coming weeks. So thanks to Steve Harrison for inviting me out to have uh, my podcast represented, to have Salem Media represented as well, as I talked a bit about producing in New York with Kevin McCullough, Drive Time, 3 to 4 on AM 570 The Mission, and uh, 970, AM 970 The Answer, 5 to 6. So that is uh, something to look forward to here on this podcast. But today, as I was going home and as I was continuing to see that the shooter in Pittsburgh was charged with 29 counts uh, after murdering 11 in a synagogue, wounding six, a couple of officers as well, but a synagogue. The Jewish community is rocked tonight. And I don't talk about my faith as much uh, from a deeper perspective, but I am blessed to have been bar mitzvahed and baptized and confirmed. And my pastor, Pastor Solano, who's in New Jersey, she is carrying on, and and she may not realize it, but she's carrying on what what Rabbi Joseph Gelberman taught, which was tolerance, which was love, which was acceptance. And I really believe Rabbi Gelberman brought stability into this world for the Jewish community. And he really was around the world. He went to different places and taught his mess- the message he had gotten from God to preach. And he taught the Torah. He taught Hebrew. He taught what it was like for life and how to be living a loving life. So today I really miss him because of his wisdom that we do not have in this country right now. Because you have Minister Farrakhan calling Jewish people basically termites. Disgusting. You do have Jewish people in the Jewish community fighting for their lives like they have even before the Holocaust, but definitely through the Holocaust, fighting for their lives. And this is why I really am thinking of my Jewish background because I've, as I mentioned, been bar mitzvahed. And as I've gotten into Christianity and seen how Christ was Jewish and healed so many Jewish people and and observed all of the Jewish traditions, it's resonating again with me. And so today, aside from how awful it is that this group in the, I believe it is, Tree of Life Synagogue suffered today, putting religion aside, for that moment. But then when you think yes. It was an anti-Semitic attack. When you think yes. This shooter was ranting and raving. About how he hated Jews. On Gab. Which claims to want. Free speech and champion free speech. But they're also championing hate speech. And I'm not afraid to say that. On this podcast. Gab.com. Did not pick up. On this shooter. And his postings. And we don't know why that is. But if you're claiming to champion free speech. Please. Please. 
condemn and remove the hate speech. Warning signs all over the shooter's Gab page. So if you want to tweet at them at GetOnGab to say how bad and how responsible they are, feel free to do that. If you want to jump on Twitter and ask Jack, uh, the CEO of Twitter, and ask Twitter themselves why they haven't removed the comments by quote-unquote Minister Farrakhan. I say quote-unquote because a minister of good faith does not talk like that. And I am fed up tonight here on Keeping It Real. I really am. Because we've seen a week in which we were under siege. We've seen a week in which a synagogue shot up, 11 killed, 6 wounded. It's not tiresome yet? Of course it's tiresome. And I'm going to use a hashtag that I feel... Many on the anti-Trump side would use because they believe Trump's all about hatred. And in some cases, Trump hasn't helped his cause with that. But overall, it's time to erase hate once and for all. And we have to all, we have to all be part of that mission together to erase the hatred from people's hearts. Because if we don't do it, it'll never get done. God's put us on this earth, it seems more clear, tonight to heal people's hurting and hating hearts. And if we don't do it, more problems will happen. More murders will happen. God wants to heal the world. And he continues to in his own ways. But he's asking us to help him. Heal the world. And we are failing as a country. We are failing when we have political leaders left and right inciting violence. We are failing when we as individuals who are not leaders, but just everyday Americans trying to get through the day, can't get through it without an argument politically. We're failing as human beings right now to combat the hate. So it's time to buck up to get people who are willing to help bring solutions to problems on the airwaves, bring them on, talk about the problems of the world, and solve them one by one. It's no longer a... I don't know. It's just no longer a game. I wouldn't say a game. But it's no longer something to just post about and tweet about. It's to act on. It's to make solutions happen. It really is coming into one room and solving our differences. Resolving to make people's hateful hearts or those who have hate in their hearts healed once and for all. Of course, this is a fantasy land kind of idea, right? Because you can never achieve world peace. And we know that. And actually, one way to do that is to combat the violence. Combat our enemies. Domestic and foreign. Is it gun control? Well, I think there can be a mix, a compromise with it. But it's ultimately the human heart. The human heart again today showed its hatred in this one person. Or how hateful people can be. And it has to stop. And if we don't stop it, I don't think the generations after us can stop it. I'm sorry, X-Gen. Or I maybe it's Z-Y, I'm not sure. But I'm sorry, generation after me. Because you're on your cell phones all the time. I'm starting to wonder if you have the capability to solve the problems of the world. Because, as my father likes to say, we are becoming zombies as a country. You can't even walk down the street without 5,000 people with their head down in their phone. You can't walk, sit on a subway without watching people's miserable faces and self-absorbedness in your face. 
They're distant. And the phone is a big reason why we're distant. But now, as Common actually says, now's the time to fix that. We do have technology at our fingertips. We do have solutions right on our front door waiting to be heard. And if we don't do it, I don't know if the next generation after this will be able to function in such a way where solutions will be heard. It may sound like a dire keeping it real tonight, but it really feels like this. When we're off a week of the explosive packages, fake or not fake, Whatever you may think, you're going to think. But honestly, the FBI, Secret Service, they got this guy who was causing our country havoc, who was putting us under siege. They got him. And we have to be thankful for that. And then this tragedy happens today in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it can't be going on anymore. And if it takes president denouncing continually, I will accept that. As he did tonight. If it takes one another. Instead of arguing on every point. On Facebook, Twitter and wherever. To really start hearing each other out. I'm down for that too. But let's not be combative anymore. Because we're already dealing with a combative spirit. In this country. That wants to send explosives. That wants to kill a Jewish community that wants to eradicate certain people. And while we cannot let them, and we will not let them, we also know there's a way to combat it. And because we are sane, it's not fighting back with weaponry. It's fighting back with Teaming up together, having each other's back, making sure that the enemy knows he is not going to get off scot-free. No, that there is an army awaiting the next enemy to bring them down. And then that army is us. We as a society... We have so many sane people on this planet. We can make an army of common sense, of solutions. But we are too distant right now to make that army form. And I don't mean an armed army. I mean just a group willing to face evil in its tracks Cut them down and let them know they will not and they cannot do any harm to us. Because we as America will not let it. We as America will not let those who want to harm us enter this country illegally. We will not let those who dare enter a synagogue with a gun be allowed to do it anymore. And the main solution right now is that we have to unify. We have to, as a country, be solidly together in this fight. And if we're not, then America, yes, is on the path of disappearing. I hate to say it, but this week and these last few months and the Calls for incivility and the incivility and the instability in this country is leading to believe that we are deteriorating as a country. But if we want America to be the America we all grew up in, if we want truly Halloween to be the only scary time, you know, because you get good dressed up and it's all uh, a scare fest and all that good stuff, you get the hundred hands and whatnot. If we want Halloween to be the only scary time in this country, you know what that's going to take? It's going to take 364 other days in the year of being together to combat the real enemies. Not the costume characters, but the real enemies at our doorstep. 
See, the enemy wants to knock away the solutions from our doorstep, and they're doing a damn good job of it. But are we going to let that happen anymore? No, sir, me. At least I'm not. And at least you should not either. 29 federal counts. 29. Shooting up a synagogue. And we're all just going to tweet about it. We're all just going to, I don't know, post about it. Yes, give our thoughts and prayers. But I even think the thoughts and prayers can go so far. I know that's the case. And so is gun control. Gun control can't control the situation. But ideas and solutions, brain power, brain power that we as a collective wrangle up together to stop the enemy in his or her tracks. That's what we need. That's what we need. We don't need another Twitter debate. We don't need another Facebook debate. We've had those. And it continues to happen over and over and over again. So now it's a time as a collective to maybe work to shut down Gab.com. To maybe work to get Twitter to remove actual hate speech. Like Minister Farrakhan's message on the Jewish people. On the Jewish community. His hateful rhetoric toward them. Maybe petitioning pushing these social media sites to actually do something other than facilitate debate. But when we say take something down, take the video, take the tweet down. Don't let it linger there to inspire people. That's not doing anybody good in this country right now. And guys, if we really want to change the world for the better... If we want to take a ride on Cat Stevens' peace train, that ride isn't a free ride. It takes work to jump on the peace train. And we're learning that every day. But what do we do? We continue to just debate about it. We continue to, to bemoan it. We continue to say how terrible this is. Well, let's get off our butts and stop saying it's terrible and start working on ways to fix the misery. To go from miserable to just so much better and so much more unified. Because the more we tweet, the less time we have. The more we Facebook post about it, the less time we have. So if you see community meetings to combat the violence, you go to them. If you see community policing events to work with the community, you go to them to learn more. If you, and I know it's a cliche, but if you do see something, say something. It's time to stop fighting on Facebook and Twitter and every possible place possible. It's time to stop saying, oh, how bad this is and start saying, here's how we fix it. I like Andrew Pollock's idea and hashtag fix it. So part of fixing it is erasing the hate. Part of fixing it is going off social media and going into the fields and and listening to actual concerns and acting on those concerns to fix them. To report on Gab.com or even Facebook or Twitter when something's going on. I'm done. I'm done debating. I'm done even posting about it because it's time to take action. And time to collectively think on how to solve these problems. Because they're not solving themselves. And we're just wasting time getting to them by debating. Debate club was fun in high school. But we can clearly see that the debate in this country is doing nobody good. Because nothing's being stopped. And it's up to us to stop it. So let's get off our phones a little bit. Get into rooms where we can meet. Discuss solutions. Act on those solutions. Bring those solutions to Congress. And boom, there you have it. Maybe it's easier said than done. Maybe it's easier said than done. 
but I'm willing to take the challenge. Are you? I'm ready to take the hashtag erase the hate challenge because we have to do it. We have to find solutions. We have to fix it. And keeping it real with Alexander Garrett will do its best to help the fixing along. Are you with me? Stay tuned for more as the days roll on. I'm Alexander Garrett, and we'll talk to you soon.